and I'm back. I'm super excited to be back, you guys. And today I want to show you how much you can do with a single cue. Hence the slightly clickbaity title magic with single cues. Alright, so I have four sequences over here. And as you can see, they all just have a single cue. And what's surprising about it is that there's a lot of stuff happening for just a single cue. And I'm pretty sure that you thought, if you're anything like me, that these kind of looks can only be done with multiple steps in a sequence or an effect or whatever. Um, when I first found about, out about these tricks, it blew my mind. So today I'm showing you how you can replicate all of these, part number one, and then part number two. I have a set of macros that will help you really quickly create these kind of looks. Um, so just a single cue. All right, so let's dive right into it. I'm just going to move these suckers down a little bit. We have our Sharpies over here, and of course I need to bring them up to full. By the way, you will notice that I'm using keyboard shortcuts. Um, you just want to go up here and click on shortcut and when everything is blue then you know you have that mode activated and what's cool is that you can actually see all of these different shortcuts and trust me it makes your life so much easier so much less painful when working with on pc um ma2 on pc all right back to our sharpies we have them on full right as you're used to it but here's the kicker, one thing I never really, you know, noticed much <laughs> until I saw someone use it is this fade layer over here. Now guess what you can do here. Uh, you can kind of switch through all these different attribute layers. Um, and as the name suggests, you can set a fade value for the attribute dimmer. So now when we store this over here in an empty slot, you will see it only has that one cube. Also, by the way, notice that I have a gold release. So if you go assign that button and kind of swipe up and down on this field um, behind it or just click through it and then click on that go button, it will become a gold release. And gold release is cool because it fires off your single queue and then turns the executor off right away. And that will be useful in a second. If you want to do that, go ahead and just click on save default sequence assignment and like that. Whenever you create one of these single queue sequences, it will automatically have a go release trigger. All right, so now when I, when I execute this, it fades in, but it doesn't fade out. Uh, simple solution, right click on it and then close that thing immediately or by using my right and left hand, right click escape. And then you have the off time up here. And obviously you could also just use the command line for it, but you know, I kind of like the, the interface for most parts. So now you can see all of the fixtures fade in and then fade out again. How nice. All right, second look we wanted to create is kind of the fixtures turning on one after another. And that's also really not that hard. It's such a cool trick though. So I'm setting the dimmer value and the fade value. And now on to the third layer. Now, if we were to just enter two right here, it's kind of stupid because then the whole queue would wait for two seconds until something would happen because we're setting the dimmer value. And obviously you only see something, you know, that, that a fixture creates or outputs uh, when the dimmer is set. So what we do instead is actually enter a range zero through let's say 0.8 now when we store this and then clear out the programmer we can see that the fixtures are turning on one after another because here's the thing with the range of zero through 0.8 what you essentially did is set the delay for the dimmer value of this first fixture to zero seconds so it would immediately start fading in and the last one only starts after 0.8 seconds. And obviously, if you if you have a through range, then all the fixtures in between kind of get uh, equal steps between 0 and 0.8 seconds. 
So that's how you can create the second look. Now what's really cool, and that's like the third look, and then I'll, I'll switch over to the macros that I created. Um, when we take a look at the third example, now it gets interesting. Uh, I actually figured out a way of how you can use, you know, you can kind of, all right, set the dimmer value, set the fade, and then um, set the delay by using MA tricks. That actually works. So what you can do is uh, create multiple blocks. No, wait. Uh, that was wrong, sorry. Actually go like that, for example. So now what you can do is actually separate your fixtures into four groups and kind of have them all, you know, have this little fade in. But instead, what you can do here, which is going to be a lot easier, is go 0 through 0.8. And now comes the cool part, through point, no wait, through 0, through 0.8, through 0. Now, I'm not even sure what I did here. Let's see. Uh, separates 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. It separates all these fixtures into four uh, different, you know, through ranges, essentially. So now when we clear out the programmer and hit this thing, you can see that the fixtures kind of um, have this more complex look about it. And I really love that. Now that got me thinking, and now we're getting to the interesting part of today's video. That got me thinking that actually you can kind of automate that. And here's what I created, which is free for you to download. You will find the link in the video description. And also this time I have a small GitHub page on this thing. So all these macros and all these presets are actually exported so you can directly pull them into your show file from the GitHub page. So make sure to check out the link below for explanations on how to do that. Show files there as well. So, all right. So here's what I created. And I'm just going to delete these so we have more space to experiment. What you want to do here is, uh, first of all, set the attribute layer, which is dim, if you're not sure what kind of attributes um, are created, whoops. You can just go and enter list attribute. And all of these are, you know, supported. These are all the names for all of these different attribute layers up here. So what you want to do here is um, tell these macros what attribute layer you want to set and also which value you want to set it to. Let's say we just want to set our dimmer to 30. The delay is what we set earlier by hand. And in this case, let's just say 0.8. And then the off time of the executor, let's put that to two seconds. So once you created all of these settings over here, you just have to, you know, set them up once. What you then want to do is make a selection of fixtures, just any selection, doesn't matter create your or select your fade in, which will set the fade layer. All right. And then uh, just select a pattern like this one over here. Once you're done, just go store. And you can see over here, select executor in this case, this one over here, it will automatically clear out your programmer. And now we can see nothing. So now you can see the pattern that you saw over here. Uh, there are two rows of fixtures just going outwards and fading out with two seconds while the fade in is at 0.5, just like we expected it. So let's just take a look at this. Um, maybe, sorry, I didn't, I didn't even mean to reset this thing. I just want to set it to 100. So now again, Sharpies, no fade in. Let's go from both ends of the selection, hitting hit store, and then select your executor. And now you can see the off time is still set to two seconds, but the fade in is really hard. Because that's, you know, we, we just didn't select a fade in value. 
Other example, Sharpies, let's say, nah, I want to have it real smooth. Uh, make it go from last fixture to the first, store, and then over here. All right. And just like that, you have single Q looks that, that are really, really amazing. Now, one last thing that I want to show you, and then I'll let you go, and then you can actually go and try this for yourself. This one up here, I mean, you probably already figured out how to do this, but this is still a single cue, and that's the beauty of it. And that's why I wrote these back rows. So if we want to recreate this, what I want to do is go Sharpies, make the fade in 0.8. Um, in this case, I just want to set my dimmer to 30. I'm going to, ah, let's make it fade in from the outside in, in both rows at the same time. And now what's interesting is once you hit that pattern, it actually sets these values in the programmer, in this case for the dimmer. What I can do on top though is not store, but instead go set attribute. In this case, I want it to be the tilt. I want to set it to minus 90. And now again, I'm using these pattern buttons up here to actually program this uh, thing in to the programmer. So now I'm not sure, I think, I'm just going to use this one. And now you can see tilt is set actually. So now when I go store and hit this executor, again, it clears out my programmer. So everything is in there. Um, your pattern, your dimmer delays, your um, you know tilt delays is really beautiful. Your off time is also in there. I mean, obviously, I didn't quite replicate this one down here. Let's maybe give this another shot. So let's do the inside from the inside out. Um, that was actually tilt. All right, and now set the attribute dim, make it 30. I uh, use the same pattern, store, and here we go. And that's single cues in MA2. It's not obvious, it's not easy to learn. Um, you know, you kind of have to see some really brilliant people in action with this kind of thing. And I'm not talking about me, I'm, I'm kind of talking about the really, really, you know, brilliant operators that have stole this trick for them. So, uh, enjoy, experiment, and ask questions in the comments if you have any. Also, if nothing else, hmm, let's see, socials, find me on Twitter, you know, contact me on Twitter with anything. Um, also really important, if you use any of my shit, make sure to send me a picture, all right? I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Um, and if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. You know, the drill. Until the next time, my name is Jonas, and I'm so, so thankful and glad that I was finally able to bring you a new video. New material coming soon. I finally have a camera back in action. Let's go. Just got done editing the video, good morning. Uh, don't forget, there's links in the video description that show you how you can directly import the macros and the presets you just saw into your show file. So, make sure to check that out. Have a good one, you guys.